Hello everyone, welcome to episode 5 in my series A Beginner's Guide to Procedural Generation. Last episode we explored how to generate limitless terrain, offset our vector 3 position by our player's position and store that data into a hash table. For this episode, as we now have a much better understanding as to how procedural generation works, we will be looking into generating meshes which we will at a later episode use instead of our cubes. Before we dive into the code, let's discuss and understand what meshes are and how we will generate them. What is a mesh? Meshes are constructs used by graphics hardware to draw images onto the screen. Everything you can physically see in the game world contains a mesh. Meshes are used to construct not only 3D objects, but 2D sprites also. Meshes work based on vertices that are defined in a 3D space and triangles that connect the vertices. The triangles are pretty much what we can see when the mesh is created. The first thing that we need to do is understand what data we will need to hold. We need to create two new variables, an integer array called triangles that we will use to store our triangle information and a vector three array called vertices. We will use this to store where the vertexes are spawned. When we define a vertex, it needs to be placed at the corner of every quad we create. For example, take this diagram of a grid of quads that is four by two. We have four quads along our x-axis, but we need to have five vertexes to complete our last quad. Same for the y-axis. We have two quads going up, but we have three vertexes. This means that we need to hold one more vertex than the quad we create in both the x and z dimensions. Essentially, what we are doing is creating a grid of points that we will use to connect our triangles. Now that we've populated the vertices and know where we are connecting and spawning, we need to define the triangles. But before we do, it's worth mentioning that when creating this type of mesh, we will only see it from one direction. This is due to the way that Unity handles backface culling. Basically, we don't want to waste processing power rendering what the player won't see. Each triangle has three points and this will make up half of our quad. For a full quad, we need six, aka two triangles. However, we won't be generating a single quad, but rather all the quads to fill up our world based on the length of our world X and world Z. When connecting the vertexes, we need to work in a clockwise rotation. This means that our triangles are arranged in a specific order, starting from 0, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2. This is a very quick and brief overview of meshes, so I will be attaching some resources in the description below that will go into detail covering UVs, normals, tangents, colors, and bone heights. But I would only recommend learning about those things once you are comfortable with the concepts of triangles and vertices. Let's create a new mesh generator script. We create a new class mesh generator and within this class we define our world size world size x and world size z e. we make them private so we can adjust them in our inspector we create a new mesh variable called mesh this will be the new mesh that we assign to our mesh filter we then define the arrays that will hold our triangles and vertices i've created two new methods a generate mesh and an update mesh Let's start off by creating a new mesh. Now that we've created our mesh, we need to get our mesh filter component and assign it to hold our mesh. I've also gone ahead and included our generate mesh and our update mesh methods within our start function. Now that we've updated our start function, let's go inside the generate mesh method and define our triangles and vertices. We've defined our triangles to be that of our world X times by our world Z times by six. This is due to us wanting a full quad rather than just a singular triangle. We've also 
gone ahead and populated our vertices vector 3 by adding our world size x plus 1 times by our world size z plus 1. If you remember, for every quad we create, we need to add an extra vertex. We now need to create two nested for loops, one for our x-axis and one for our z-axis. We need to start off with our z-axis, so basically have this in reverse due to us wanting front-facing quads. Now that we've created this nested for loop, we can go ahead and populate our vertices array. We create a new vector 3, taking in our x and z, and pass that into our vertices array. However, we need an index of where we're going to be placing these within this array. We can create a local integer within our first for loop, making it local to that for loop. Anything underneath this for loop will be able to utilize that variable. We can do this by specifying int i equals to zero, comma, then our axes z equals to zero. We can add as many as we want as long as they are of same type and separated by commas. A nifty little trick in case you didn't know. Now we can pass our variable i into our vertices. Now that we have the index of where we will be spawning, we need to increment our index by one every single time we go through this loop. So i++. plus plus. Now we have defined our vertices and its locations, so let's go ahead and work on our triangles. We now need to create two more for loops which are nested, the same as we've done up top. Within these nested for loops, we need to go ahead and assign our triangles. Let's start off with the first point in our triangle. This will be equal to zero. We then move on to the second point that we need to assign in our triangles and assign this as world Z plus one. This is because we need to move up a row rather than continuing on. Then triangles two equals to one, triangles three equals to one, Triangles 4 equals to world Z plus 1. Triangles 5 equals to world Z plus 2. If you remember from the diagram that we had on screen earlier, what we're doing when we're saying world Z is we are moving up a row. This is done so we can trigger points like our 1 and our 3. If we split this up, here we're assigning one of the triangles. Here we're assigning the second triangle, and this in return is generating us a full quad. However, we don't want our triangles array to be always set on 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's go ahead and create two new local variables called tries and verts. We assign them the value of 0. Now, in order to get the correct index in our triangles array, all we simply say is tries plus 0 tries plus one, tries plus two, tries plus three, tries plus four, and tries plus five. However, we also need to add our vertex count. This is the integer verts that we created. So we can say triangles index tries plus zero equals to verts plus zero, verts plus world z plus one, and so on. Now that we've assigned our local variables, created our triangles, we need to increment our verts count and our tries count. Verts will always increment by one, whereas we need to increment tries by six. We also need to loop through our verts count every time we hit our Z axis for loop. Now that we finished our generate mesh method, what we need to do now is go inside our update mesh function. If we try to run the code, nothing will happen because we're not actually assigning our vertices and triangles to our mesh. So let's do this here. The first thing that we want to do is clear any meshes that already exist. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and assign our triangles and our vertices. We also need to recalculate our normals. Now that this is done, Let's head over into Unity.
One important thing that I forgot to mention is that it's very important in which order we assign the variables to our mesh. We always need to assign our vertices first, followed by our triangles. This ensures that the triangles that we create are able to be attached to the vertices we create. Now within Unity, the first thing that we want to do is create an empty game object and call this our mesh holder. We need to add two new components, a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. We can also go ahead and attach our mesh generator script. Let's make the world 10 by 10. We can also create a new material called mesh mat. Let's assign this to our mesh holder game object. Now if we go and run our game, we can see that we have a perfectly generated world from quads. We can see the individual triangles that make up our quads. Thank you very much for joining me on episode 5 of my beginner's guide to procedural generation. I hope that this episode shared some insight into how to procedurally generate meshes. If you would like to do some further reading, I have included some resources in the description below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to comment, like and subscribe. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.